Here we are in another edition of OTEC TV, where we are talking about the Lydia project with Bob and Kay Petrick, and a nice feature story in the May 2010 edition of Rural Light. And uh, this little uh, interview will do nice to supplement it. So, uh, Bob and Kay Petrick, thank you for joining us today, and why don't you tell us a little bit about the Lydia project? Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. The Lydia project is relatively new. Um, we started that in the fall of 2008, and uh, that was a result of uh, working in Cambodia since uh, 2004. And uh, when we first went to Cambodia, and uh, we were introduced to a trade school, and that trade school uh, was training girls to sew. And uh, as uh, often happens, in our world today, after uh, two or three years, it was actually started by rodeo, Rotary Clubs in uh, Colorado. And their funding came, ran out, and so the uh, girls were going to be closed down because nobody had taken it over. And we took that project over, and it's called Khmer Crafts, and uh, it's a social entrepreneurship business in that we uh, develop it, uh, the only reason, the sole reason that it uh, that it's there is to bring at-risk girls. Uh, prostitution is a major problem in Cambodia, and uh, to give them an opportunity, rather than going into the sex trade, uh, to learn a trade, so that they can build their self-esteem and then and they can uh, actually uh, have employment. And so uh, we've been working on that project, and uh, one of our uh, one of the people that uh, companies that purchases purses uh, from the girls that we make uh, is from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, the company went to Cambodia uh, with the idea of uh, of hand, uh, taking the stuff from uh, from these girls uh, as part of their uh, Helping Hands project. And while the executive was there, they had to come and look at the plant and so forth. And while he was there, we uh, uncovered a, uh, an orphanage that had been abandoned as well. Not It's about an hour and a half drive from, uh, from Battenbong, where we're located, Battenbong, Cambodia. And uh, uh, Rob Corley is his name, and, and he and I got to talking about it and they were had 20 some kids 28 kids and they had nothing to eat they were out of rice uh, barely uh, surviving not knowing what to do and, and we uh, were able to put together some funds and uh, and help them and when we got back to the states then we uh, with uh, our older son Ryan who had been over to Cambodia with us we decided that we didn't want to see this happen again, and uh, a lot of well-meaning people go over and uh, to different third-world countries and, and work, do wonderful work, and then they come back, and the stress of time and, uh, and age, uh, eventually, uh, a lot of them are unable to continue the worthy project they started, and so. Rob and I decided the best way to overcome that was to start a 5013C and get our message out, uh, the people that would be interested, and that way it would have continuity if uh, he was killed in a plane wreck or, or I was, uh, or I died, or whatever happens in the future, Lydia can go on. So we named it after Lydia, which is a Bible character in purple, and. Uh, and we just okay. um, I would just like to show you a picture of um, these are uh, most of our sewing girls we've added a few new um, at, that we took at our factory uh, in Battenbong, Cambodia and um, these are some of the products that they make um, we call this a hobo purse this is a hobo purse and they put a lot of decorations on them and uh, basically it's just you know like over your shoulder purse and they have some really pretty fabrics different things than we have here in the states um, each girl um, 
has her picture and her story on a card and uh, we attach with each purse. So um, some of the purses are silk and some of them are cotton. Um, but it's, it's nice to know, know who you're helping when you buy a purse um, that um, who made it. Um, sometimes um, fabrics are a problem over there, uh, getting some fabrics, but here is, uh, sometimes they'll just uh, go to the market and get a silk scarf and make a purse out of that. So they have some beautiful things to work with and uh, they've done that before. And then we have um, a billfold here that they've made that very nice. And uh, I'm gonna move right over here. Uh, these are some other purses that they've made out of their local cotton materials. We call it a so cute because it's so cute. It's got like a little saddle bag, two compartments, and they come in all different um, colors. And um, the name of our factory, Khmer Crafts, the meaning, uh, the reason we chose that in Cambodia, um, instead of uh, Khmer means Cambodian, that they, their, their, their language is called, the, they actually pronounce it Khmer, the Khmer language, and so it's basically Cambodian crafts, and so that's where we get the Khmer. And uh, anyway, we, um, here's another purse that they, um, they do a beautiful job. They, all the sewing machines, they don't have electricity uh, in most of the places over there, so they're all treadle sewing machines. Um, and they, uh, uh, now we have a little electricity, but um, when we train the girls and they go back to their villages, they're not going to have electricity, so we like to train them on the treadle machines and charcoal filled irons so that they can work from home and start their own business and be successful. So, um, this uh, July we'll be having a display at the uh, at the Art Center here in Baker City, the Crossroads Art Center for the whole month of July. And so I'd like to invite people to come and see all the different things that we've collected up from Cambodia. Uh, these are some paintings that we've brought back that um, these are what they call um, uh, uh, Apsara dancers or they're in their uh, Cambodian culture, um, goes way, way back. Uh, the, uh, for a form of uh, art, uh, dance, a dance, yeah, art. They um, they do these beautiful. Um, they tell a story with dancing, and it's very beautiful. And uh, uh, it's called. Um, they're called Apsara dancers. That's their cultural name for it. And uh, uh, in uh, Angkor Wat, which is one of the major uh, um, wonders of the world, where they the ancient. Uh, uh, temples and all they uh, resurrected. You see, uh, this is their uh, national, um, like our American eagle. This is their cultural um, uh, symbol. symbol for um, Cambodia, and she's called Apsara, and you see her everywhere in uh, Cambodia. And uh, this picture depict, depicts pretty much what it looks like out in the villages, and and that's where we enjoy working is out in the villages. Uh, really working with the people. They're really precious people and very grateful for anything you can do for them. And it's very, uh, you see uh, ox carts. I mean, that's just a way of life over there going down the road carrying their, their things to the market in the city or whatever. And uh, uh, anyway, we've gathered up a few things and we're looking forward to showing them in July at the Art Center.